Hello there. Um, so this is going to be for the carnivore diet. I mean, we're, we're in kind of a deep inflation, everything is expensive as heck now mode. So sometimes you just want to butcher your own meat because it's hell of a lot cheaper. This is like um, this is the round. Uh, this is the round eye steak. Um, I got it at whatever it's called um, BJ's for um, like less than four bucks a pound. I don't don't quote me on the exact price. I don't remember. But this is about five pounds or five or six pounds of, of basically meat, and it's nice, right? And the carnivore diet, I mean, yeah, so, yeah, I still do bananas and olives, which um, I don't have right out here. But what we're going to do is prepare it by butchering and cutting off some of this weird, like, skin substance. I'm getting a little... I'm not a professional butcher, so... And a lot of you watching are probably amateur butchers too. So this is what it looks like when an amateur actually does this stuff. A butcher has a much sharper knife. I've got sharp knives too and everything. But you just want to get kind of this weird tendony thing off. Because um, this doesn't do any really good for the meat. But it actually will, you know, dogs and stuff will love it. They'll, they'll eat that stuff right up. Um, just kind of grab the stuff out here. Yeah. Now, the reason why I'm doing a carnivore diet is it, it makes real a lot of sense in nature, um, just because you know we're humans, right? And we're walking around like you know, before industrialization and everything, and we had we had grocery stores. You're just walking around, you got a farm going, you got some animals grazing and stuff, and you're taking care of them. They're taking care of your your waste products like you know, corn husks and stuff. And so animals and humans have a, like a very symbiotic relationship all through our existence, right? I mean, you don't have to be a Bible reader to know. I mean, you know, I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to go all religious on you, but even God gave us dominion over the animal kingdoms, which doesn't mean destroy them. Doesn't mean enslave them. It just means you know, live in harmony with nature. And so, by living in harmony with nature, we take care of the animals, the animals take care of, they, they eat all the food, all the fats and stuff, all the grains and leftover stuff that we can't eat. And then they give us food. And then they, a couple years, 10 years, five or 10 years later, they give us food. Or they become our food. I'm probably cutting off a little too much of this fat. Because I want to save some fat because we also need fat in our diet. Uh, especially if you're in a carnivore diet, you need to actually eat more fat. And from basically what's going on is, is your, bo your body basically generates bile which breaks down the fats and everything. This is just kind of... And fats are actually an essential part of your diet. And I'm going to put this in a tray here. I'll probably feed this to, to my crows later. Um, I don't have crows in captivity, as I said, living in harmony with nature. That is a waste product that I'm not going to throw away. That will go to the, the wild crows outside, outside of where I live. Um, just because I live in a city doesn't mean I have to be an asshole to animals, right? Uh, it's just animals need to live too. And by feeding the crows, they take care of other things. Like they keep the uh, the mockingbird population down, which are building nests inside of our heating vents. So I'm gonna I'm just doing a kind of a lazy job here, but this all this stuff needs to go away, and I'm not gonna waste any of this meat. Jeez, the crows are gonna eat like kings this week. Um, there we go. And I do this once. This is about. This will last me about a week. So now, yeah, I'm not like. There we go. Okay. You want to leave some fat on it. So your body basically breaks down fat with with um, it creates bile basically to break down fat. Now, I got, you know, if you want to use a nylon knife, go like this, and it just cuts right through it. 
Or, if you want to feel manly, <laughs> oops, use a Kabar or K bar, as they're popularly known, right? So, the two finger rule, oops, let's turn this little sucker around. I'm left handed right here, so let's turn the sucker around. Two finger rule, about there, boom, and don't cut your fingers off. Okay, I like the other knife better because it's longer. Sorry, you're too short. <laughs> All right, so just basically two, boom. And I got a scale over here, let's measure it. Let's, oops, let's wait. I think this is about a half a pound, right? This is this grams, ounce, pound ounce, okay. It's points. It's about what, six ounces, so not even half a pound. Um, but that's a good size, yeah, about five, five, five ounces. So that's a good, these are good, this is a good size cut, right? Five ounces is good. Eight, eight ounces is decent. Yeah, this is, here we go, eight ounces, 8.1 ounces, perfect, right? This is a perfect cut. Um, and you just want, I, don't, I mean, I'm not gonna weigh every single one of them. I'm not that much of a nitpick, right? You just get a rough estimate. And you just cut it away, right? And there we go. Ah. Okay. And this is a baby cut. This is probably like three ounces here. Yeah, 3.9, so four ounces. Um, and just put that aside. Two fingers, boom. This is a nice thick section of the meat. And this is gonna last me about a week of eating. So this is perfect, right? And the, the 10 pounds that I bought last week lasted, I still got one piece left. But then again, I did cheat a little bit. I had pizza and some spaghetti. Um, just because being Italian, you can't, you know, if you don't have spaghetti once a week, you're gonna die. It's like a vampire, you know, you gotta drink blood every day. Italians gotta eat spaghetti at least once a week or they, they start dying. And uh, so this is it, basically. I'm not gonna lie to you on my time scales here. Now, the preservation part comes in handy. I'm done with the knife. Just give it a quick rinse right now. So, now we gotta preserve it. How are we gonna do that? Okay, we got a nice, nice, nice board of meat. Boom. The scale can go away. I gotta wash this later. Um, so I've got, yeah, this is actually last week's meat. It's still, still good, it's still cookable. Because it's properly preserved. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is, and I washed the bin out actually, and I took the meat out. Um, I'm not sponsored here. So black bearded, uh, bearded butchers. These guys actually are what inspired me for this whole thing, right? So I'm gonna layer the bottom part with that and I'm actually gonna coat these guys over here. Um, just a very surface level. I'm gonna do this again later. In fact, I'm gonna stop that. Um, now I'm gonna actually put a little bit of olive oil on the bottom of the pan, right? Just a little bit, just a splash. And the olive oil actually has a very important use. This guy needs to come out and go on the top layer. There we go. Yes, it's on a clean plate. Because I gotta season the bottom of it. Now a little bit of sea salt, right? So the sea salt just kind of keeps the, the moisture levels. Adds it enhances the flavor of the meats. So I'm just gonna lay these in here like this. Oh, shoot. 
And yeah, um, Italian. <laughs> so yes, I love me some. Uh, I love the sonic vinegar on my on this on my meats, right? And just a little bit, just to cover the bottom of the barrel. It, this will actually mix with the juices that are going to start coming out because of the salt. So as the salt extracts the water from the meat, it's going to bring the water out, and it's going to actually kind of in the waters and the salt and water and flavor is going to start going back in. It's a fancy word called osmosis, right? So basically, the, the it's reverse uh, reverse osmosis, really. And these little baby pieces, they got a little spot right here in the middle. Look at that, perfect. Okay, so that's layer one, right? I got one, two, I got three. I got a couple more pieces to go. So just a little bit of layer in here. And this also has a lot of salt in it too. So this seasoning is really good for um, free meat. And as long, if you season this two hours ahead of time, it's gonna be the most, uh, I'm, I'm not even joking. This has probably been made the best damn steak I've ever had in my life. I'm not even, I'm not even, these guys ain't even paying me. They, I don't even, they don't even know who I exist, right? I'm just some guy that exists. Now I'm not gonna heavily salt because I don't want to dry or basically cure the, um, the meat. I just want the salt to kind of add a little bit of flavoring to it and enhancements. And that's it. This is the next layer. Boom, 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 and bada boom. And then I'm gonna grab a little more of this stuff. Now this has been, this has literally kept the meat super, super juicy and everything. Um, and I gotta put a little bit of balsamic on the top, because, you know. Now, okay, I did it wrong. Are you supposed to put the balsamic first and then the spicing? But, because the balsamic will just wash the spice off usually. Um, I kind of screwed up the ordering a little bit. Oil, liquid, whatever, base first, and then the seasoning goes on the top. Um, and you can't really over season this too much, so I'm just doing a very light touch up on that. And now the secret sauce here. My favorite, tagarashi. Now this is basically just basically chili pepper, right? A, a, a lot of chili pepper and a bunch of stuff. So, or a couple of extra ingredients. So basically that's tagarashi sauce. Um, and it's, this will add a little bit of heat to, heat to your, your mix. So don't put too, you, and you can use this very sparingly because this is really, really hot. And this will get all that flavor right in there. Oops, there we go. And I had to wash this container off with my hand. I forgot to, because I'm doing a video, I usually wash my hands after touching everything. I'm very, I'm a very compulsive hand washer. So I'm like freaking out right now because I haven't washed my hands. <clears throat> and then this is tomorrow's, tomorrow's meal. Um, it's, it's a little gray because, you know, it's been there sitting there for a week and it's got the, all the balsamic and it's oxidized. Basically this is all oxidized. Come and see. There's no, there's, yeah, it's mostly, I can smell the vinegar in there. There's no smell of rotting yet. So that's still a viable piece of meat, even though it's a little ugly looking. Um, it's all red, it's nice and red. I, I can assure you it's red, nice and red on the inside still because of the salt and the, and the extra preservatives have added in. But anyways, this is the end of the video. Thank you for watching if you got this far. Have a wonderful, wonderful.